Here we're going to look at phosphorus deficiency symptoms in a cannabis plant. So looking at the element phosphorus here, we see what a normal leaf should look like. And phosphorus is mined and shipped uh, large quantities all over the world. So let's take a look at what the deficiency symptoms in cannabis look like. So we should first realize its plant importance. You know, why does a plant even need phosphorus to begin with? For, remember, it is a mobile nutrient that so will move through the plant. It's a vital component for um, phosphorus bonds in the nucleic acids of DNA and RNA, so important to the vital main structure of the plant. Uh, it's also part of ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy unit of the plant. Uh, so it's got some very important components to be incorporated for the plant to be able to survive. In addition to the growth factors uh, that phosphorus is associated with, usually stimulated root development, increased stalk and stem strength, and improved flower formation and seed production. This is why it's typically for cannabis associated with high levels and with bloom associated fertilizers. Now the trial was conducted, so this is kind of a rare opportunity to see in cannabis what a phosphorus deficiency actually looks like. Here's some of the backgrounds of the study. Cultivar's wife, which is high in CBD, it's these plants that you're going to see about 80 days old. They were grown in a greenhouse, so the conditions were kept very consistent. You're going to see a control plant that was fed the optimum rate of nutrients, and then the test plant, which was phosphorus deficient. So here's a phosphorus deficient cannabis plant. The early growth will stun if pea deficiency occurs, uh, so you don't have that quite robust and vigorous growth to start with. It tends to be kind of subtle in mature plants, but since it's mobile, you want to look towards the lower or older leaves, and I have one circled here in particular. Phosphorus can be translocated into the buds during development uh, because it is that mobile nutrient, so it can move throughout the plant. So it's kind of those lower leaves are the most likely ones to show a deficiency if it does occur. This is a nice comparison between that same phosphorus deficient plant we saw and what a normal balanced fertilizer plant um, received. There's a white wall in the background and a green door to kind of give you a little bit of that color balance there. A quick look doesn't show really a major difference. The key is that yellowing leaf down here at the center of the phosphorus deficiency image. Um, that's characteristic of a deficiency of phosphorus. Now kind of zoomed into that leaf, we can see you don't expect that purple coloration that can be seen in corn and other plants, and a lot of growers think they see in purple stalk, oh, it's automatically a phosphorus deficiency. Not always the case. That can be associated with other field stresses. Uh, this is a plant that literally was fed phosphorus deficient fertilizer, so you can see what it actually may look like, versus what you may see in typical textbook kind of characteristic deficiencies. This is an, an actual cannabis plant example. Those lower leaves is where you want to look, uh, that faint green color to that yellowing uh, that can often lead to kind of browning as we're starting to see here in extreme cases. So that kind of zoomed in version of the leaf here, even in a controlled experiment there is uh, where there's a known phosphorus deficiency, the actual appearance cannot be very dramatic. It's not one of those that jumps out right at you and says, you know, wow, purple coloration or really um, light uh, green or yellow or browning or burning, uh, kind of subtle kind of is the way that it looks. This lack of ob obvious uh, visual cues is part of why growers are fearful of the potential deficiency. They're worried they're not going to see it, uh, so they always want to over add phosphorus fertilizer. Now the co common fertilizers that would be added, uh, even though it's typically not needed, uh, manures, if you're going in field applications, can vary based on the source, we're looking at cow or chicken or horse. Uh, be mindful of the bedding that's used because that can affect nutrient availability. Phosphorus also adds or, um, or organic matter when it's uh, added in the form of manure. Uh, cons, it can often be over added, which can cause um, some issues. Uh, triple super phosphate, 0, 45, 0, so 45% phosphorus. Usually based on a soil test, you're going to be adding that. That middle number there, uh, very concentrated phosphorus. And the, the downfall is that it does lack some other nutrients. Bloom fertilizers in general, as you can see here, follow the recommended rate, uh, typically very high in percent of phosphorus, that middle number, and often leads to an excess supply of phosphorus in plants, which a lot of growers, I don't think, realize. Now, the reason why I make this uh, phosphorus kind of warning here is it is mined kind of in large areas. Uh, most growers overfeed phosphorus, so I don't think they even realize that they're overfeeding the phosphorus because they have a fear of not having enough. 
So the real issue of overfeeding um, for growers are wasting resources that are being more limited. So if you look at the graph here, U.S. mine phos rock phosphate from 1900 to 2015, you can see a major ramp up, and then the mine in the United States for rock phosphate is decreased. Now, most people would associate this with we're using less. However, if we look during that same time, we look at the United States net imports of of rock phosphate, we could see imports are on the increase. So even though we were mining a lot, a lot of it was being exported, now we've kind of flipped and now we're starting to import more simply because we're running out. So by over applying, you're wasting a limiting resource. Now, if you've seen my other kind of videos, you might see the nitrogen one in particular. I also show a toxicity uh, image for comparison. There's really no toxic image because it really doesn't have any key factors. So many growers over add phosphorus and aren't realizing it because there's not that obvious sign of toxicity or overfeeding. High levels, though, can vastly reduce the effectiveness of mycorrhizae or the beneficial fungi uh, for the root system. Uh, in the root zone of the plants, not to mention the wasting of a limited nutrient, the increased cost, and the potential for groundwater contamination. So most growers are fearful of a deficiency. Most growers actually end up in a toxicity range. So just be mindful and aware of the what it takes for phosphorus and the deficiency symptoms and what they look like, uh, and just be mindful of how much fertilizer you're actually adding.